Good afternoon. Um, I'm Kata Bailin, Faculty Director of LAPSIS, and I have a pleasure of welcoming you to the last talk in the LAPSIS Lunchtime series talks this semester. Uh, and it's also the last talk in the series of visual approaches to Latin America this semester. And the team that is going to present today um, with the presentation titled Gente de la Tierra, a photo blog project to connect youth communities and stewardship of the earth has won, the team has won um, incubator interdisciplinary award in the competition last year. And that was a competition that LASIS has started. So congratulations one more time to the whole team. And uh, today they will present on the progress of the project. And uh, members of the team are Mary Beth Collins, who is the executive director of UW Medicine Center for Community and Nonprofit Studies. She holds a, holds a law degree from UW Medicine as well as a MA from LASIS. Mm -hmm. uh, so our alumni. Um, Maria Moreno, a cultural anthropologist by training, uh, who is working at UW Medicine with undergraduate certificate in global health. She leads a Earth Partnership uh, in Wisconsin, working with native communities, as well the Earth Partnership uh, with, with global initiatives in Mexico, Nicaragua, Dominican Republic, Ecuador, and Puerto Rico. And last but not least, and I think someone who did considerable amount of work in this team is Carlos Davalos, who is a PhD candidate at the School of Journalism and Mass Communication. Uh, Carlos is also a reporter um, from Mexico City, researching popular culture, identity, social movements, and comparative mass media studies. And I know Carlos from my class, <laughs> and it's very, very nice to see him in person because we only <laughs> saw each other through Zoom. So um, without further uh, ado, I am passing the uh, table to the presenters. Thank you, Helena. So, thank you all for being here. Thank you to our Zoom participants for being here as well. We're going to try to make sure you can see all three of us. And we have the slides up um, being screen shared on the Zoom presentation while we'll also advance them in the room. So we're going to just manually um, synchronize that. Um, so I think we can um, team um, get started. Um, Carlos or Maria, would you like to kick us off? Okay, let's see. So, so welcome. Uh, I'm going to, I'm going to, uh, the microphone isn't, so we have two computers. Sorry, again, we're doing this manually. Uh, this is good. It wouldn't be. You might want to turn it, change it there too, para que yo. <laughs> yeah, put this here, right? Yeah. So there is up here. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. So we are coordinating the slides uh, online and here on on face to face presentation. So my name is Carlos again. Uh, I'm. Uh, I just came into the team a year ago, less than a year ago. And uh, we're here to present the, the um, so, okay. Mine is not changing, sorry. Yep. We want to stay on this one for and a this moment. This one, yeah. Um, we're just going to present the uh, advances that the project had during the past 10 months. We're going to uh, talk about the uh, different partners that we have, which are, um, I can speak to the UW Madison Center for Community and Nonprofit Studies first, and then we can, um, go through those. Um, so yes, we're going to share with you a little bit about the project. Um, Maria, Carlos, and I have all been working on this project. Podemos hablar en español un poquito. A veces no sé qué es lo más fácil, pero yo no hablo muy bien en español. Entonces sí. probablemente voy a hablar un poquito más en inglés. Pero tenemos esto centro de estudios comunitarios y de, de organizaciones non gubernamentales. We have the U University of Wisconsin um, Center for Community and Nonprofit Studies, which is where I work every day. One of my colleagues is here with me today, Michaela. 
Um, and Maria has been a longtime collaborator of our center. Many of you may also work with us in some way. Um, but we had the pleasure of being a part of this project that began a few years ago that's actually a project that's an extension of a long-term collaboration with the Museum of Environmental Science, um, well, the University of Guadalajara system. So we're gonna share with you a little bit about that history, but our center is the host uh, entity or unit mm -hmm. for this project. Um, I encourage you to find out a little bit more about our center. We'll show you some websites later, but the link is there for our landing page. Um, and we're working with uh, Maria and Carlos's units on this project. So I'll let them say a little something about Earth Partnership and where they're coming from. Sure, thank you, Mary Beth, mm -hmm. and welcome. Welcome to those of you who are here with us today, and welcome to those of you who are far, um, and also in Madison, but are on Zoom. So Maria Moreno, and I work with the Earth Partnership Program and Global Health Institute, which is the two units that I bring to this project. Um, so the Earth Partnership is a restoration education project, uh, program that works with native communities in Wisconsin and also with teachers, community members, and high school students in creating pathways for higher education and working in the environment. And Earth Partnership is really came out of the university, um, UW's Arboretum, and it's about engaging with the outdoors. Um, you know, giving back as a way to restore the earth in which we live and engaging youth in that process and through that empowering them to be civic minded individuals in their community. And I think in many ways, this um, blog is a manifestation of that. And we'll talk more about that. Should we move to the next? Uh... Yeah, well, let's just make a quick note about um, that Carlos is a graduate student at the School of Journalism and Mass Communications. And we also have the benefit of the insights of his yeah. uh, mentor, um, Hernando Rojas, yes. um, who's kind of serving as a little bit of an advisor on this project as well, because we hope at some point we'll be able to do a little analysis on the way that the social media networks that we're using for this might have an impact um, kind of from a communications perspective mm -hmm. as well. And then I want to acknowledge while we're um, able to that we do have several of our colleagues from the Museo de Ciencias Ambientales in Guadalajara here with us on the Zoom. So we're joined here today by colleagues, um, Victor Gonzalez, um, Nestor, um, and Gabriela, um, all of whom are members of the team that we've been working with at the University of Guadalajara um, from the inception of this project, which we'll share more about. So while we have you here, um, Nestor, Gabriela, and um, Victor, it might be a little bit hard for the group in person to hear you, but we can translate. Would you like to say anything as we kick things off? Well, uh, I'll start. Okay. Um, hello, I don't have a camera on this uh, computer right now, but uh, I'll, I'll just let you uh, hear my voice. Well, it's a pleasure to be here on this presentation that uh, uh, Mary Beth and Maria, and now Carlos has been uh, pushing for our blog to start to be uh, connected with people from all over the world. And well, we are here in the University of Guadalajara, the second largest city in Mexico. And we have a very large public university where we are building uh, uh, an, an environmental sciences museum, which is very close to finishing the construction site. And we have been collaborating with the Chanson Well, and Mary Bed will uh, explain more, but for several years now, so I'm happy to be here and, and glad to meet you all. Yes, thank you for that, Victor. So if you couldn't hear very well, Victor was just saying, they're excited about the blog, they're happy to be here. We're hoping the blog has global reach and they're at the Museum of Environmental Science in Guadalajara. They have a huge project going. The construction of the museum is almost complete. And so, yeah, they're happy to be here. Thanks, Victor. Yeah. Um, and then we have, just to kind of finish up this slide in our introductions, we have a host of um, on the ground youth programs that we're working with with this project, which we'll be able to show you a map of those in just a minute. So this is not just us that's doing this work, but also a bunch of partners that are in different sites throughout North and Central and South America and the Caribbean um, that we hope to you know, continue expanding that list, but they're also a critical part of this team and project as well. 
So the goals of the session, we want to share a little bit of the background of this project with you. Um, we had a history before we received this generous Lassie's grant. Um, so we will provide you a little bit of the background with that, but then we will also get into the specifics of the goals that we set for this particular tranche of funding that we have. And then we really wanna get your feedback on kind of where we are today and where some possibilities for the future might be. Anything you two would like to add to that one? No, I think that's great. Okay, great. So I'm gonna let Maria just speak a little bit about the background of how we even got here. Sure, thank you. So, um, and as you can see from these images, yeah. Um, this is really the prepa. Uh, 15 in Guadalajara that we worked with a group of teachers from that um, school. And then they took it into the school and created this whole semester environmental program for their students, culminating in the actual um, stewardship of a rain garden that they installed on their school ground. You know, the key to this was that I think um, so while this Earth Partnership 10 step process of environmental education engaging youth was a, is a Wisconsin program, in many ways, the Guadalajara demonstrated how someone else could take the program and really translate it to what works for them. The teachers, uh, one of them, I could say that um, after she participated in the workshop, she said, I've been waiting my whole life for a program like this, which is getting the kids outside, using the out outside as a classroom, learning, and then really having the students think about you know, what kind of an, imp what are some of the problems that the community has? What are some of the solutions that we, the young people can um, undertake to address some of those problems? And I think this connects very well to bigger issues of climate change, um, war, um, just issues in any community, whether it's, um, uh, water as the students identified in their community, which is the reason why they put a rain garden on their school grounds, to issues of garbage, to issues of green spaces, to issues of security and the need to uh, address those through creating green spaces, creating more art on the walls, which I think the museum has um, proceeded to do some of these murals on walls to make it a living space, a space that's inviting for for young people and every you know families in general, so this was a in many ways I think for the Earth Partnership the um, the program in Mexico in Guadalajara with this Prepa 15 was a demonstration of what could happen. You know the blog while we have expanded it, it was really started by these high school students. They wanted to share what they were doing and they started sharing with each other and with their teachers. And then all of a sudden, Mary Beth and I thought, well, you know, like let's take this up and amplify it and use the humans of New York as a model of what we could do, not only with the students in Guadalajara, but connecting them to Wisconsin. The Earth Partnership Program is uh, on over 22 states in the US. So it's something that we could model in other places, not only in the United States, but in Latin Central and um, the Caribbean as we have done and we will demonstrate that. Yeah, and I'll just zoom out for a minute. I think Maria is a great ambassador of um, how the Earth Partnership Program was able to go into this one school in Guadalajara. Some of the visuals you see on this slide show that, particularly on the very bottom picture where the kids are in the yard, but also in the kind of large classroom setting. Those are both images from Prepa Quince, a school in the greater Guadalajara, Jalisco, um, Zapopan area. But um, I think I need to provide a little more context in that the University of Wisconsin and the University of Guadalajara have had a long standing multi decade collaboration mm -hmm. across many different disciplines and um, professors and classrooms and projects. And one of our key collaborators there, Dr. Eduardo Santana, who was just here last week, so some of you may have met him or run into him or know him already. He's a graduate of the University of Wisconsin-Madison. He got his undergraduate degree and PhD here and then became a faculty member at the University of Guadalajara and then was asked to lead a project to have a very kind of cutting edge environmental science museum in, in Guadalajara. And the image you see on the top right there with the architectural model is an image of what that museum is going to look like and is in, construction as we speak, which Victor mentioned when he first got on the call. So when that science museum project began, um, 
Eduardo, knowing he had many friends and colleagues at the University of Wisconsin, said, we would like to collaborate with some of the UW-Madison folks that we know on making this museum great and connecting with the surrounding community as we plan programming for the museum. So we had a small other incubator grant at that time in about 2015 through 2017 that allowed a delegation of University of Wisconsin faculty and staff run through our center as the host grant granting um, risk grant recipient um, to go to Guadalajara and for folks from Guadalajara to come to us and talk about ways that we could make community engaged oriented programming that would help the museum connect with the surrounding community. And this idea of bringing the Earth Partnership Program, a longstanding University of Wisconsin program to Mexico, to Guadalajara, as an extension of the museum's kind of precursor programming was, was exactly how Maria and team ended up at this school. So we had this grant for this period. We were able to do this project. It tracked the Earth Partnership curriculum, but it was specifically anchored in an urban school in a large city, um, which actually is very aligned with the purpose of the museum. The museum has very explicit tenets of wanting to inspire people who live in urban environments about the natural world, because we know that so much of our global population lives in cities, but might feel a bit separated from our codependency with nature when we're not living in more natural areas. And so this idea of bringing Earth Partnership to an urban high school was a, a concept that aligned very well with the museum project and was also a new extension of how yeah. Earth Partnership did its work. Now that project was wildly successful. We have a video of how that project went um, that you can check out sometime. And the museum I think was happy with the results. And we even presented it to the Ministry of Education in the state of Jalisco as a potential curriculum. Um, enhancer project that we could do and replicate in other schools. That said, our original incubator grant um, to work on that kind of ran out and we needed to find a way to stay in touch with the youth that we had gotten involved with and to keep the project going in a way that we thought was manageable with just our um, Museo de Ciencias Ambientales team in Guadalajara mm -hmm. and us. And the thing that we came up with was looking at a photo blog based loosely on the notion of Humans of New York. Now, how many of you here in the room or on the chat have, have seen the Humans of New York blog before? Right, so the idea, and those of you on the chat, if you wanna raise your hand, or I mean on the um, Zoom, if you wanna, yeah, raise your hand or put something in the chat. The idea of the Humans of New York blog is to do these intimate portraits of individual people and their stories, put their photograph up on a blog, a, a, an Instagram page, I think is the base, which we also used, and then tell a little bit of their story. And we thought we could do something very similar with people's relationship to the earth and share stories about their relationship to nature. So that's sort of the background. And when we got this blog going with the help of Victor and Gabi and Nestor in, in Guadalajara, we, we did incubate it. We got to pilot it with some of the students at Prepa Quince. They were enthusiastic, but we needed a little more of infusion of um, funds and resources to be able to really breathe life into it. And that's what this Lassis opportunity has given us the chance to do. Yes. So we talked through these points, I think, fairly well. History of collaboration across our large institutions, the development of uh, the project that Maria helped to lead, including in Prepa Quince. Um, we wanted an opportunity to connect virtually. Um, and the photo blog really reflects this goal of engaging young people in concepts about their ability to have a role in the future work towards a better environment. And we think it does so with a medium that youth connect to, yeah. social media. Um, and you may or may not be aware of this, but the University of Wisconsin also has a long history of scholars that look at youth engagement um, around environmental issues and other issues but even looking specifically at generating digital content, you may have heard of Patty Lowe, who does work with tribal youth around doing videos related to their concerns about the environment. Connie Flanagan was another um, inspiring PI for us who talks about when youth get involved in civic engagement around the environment early, they're more likely to do so for the rest of their lives. So this does have an anchoring in some scholarly work of UW-Madison 
faculty. Um, I'm going to let Carlos just talk a little bit about the way that the protocols of the blog work, since that is something we carried forward from the work we did with um, Nestor, Victor, and Gabby. And Carlos got to learn those and now has been training some of the schools in those. Sure. Uh, is, should, should we move to the next slide? Sure. Yeah. All right. Yeah. We got it. Okay. So, so thank you. Um, so from, from our perspective, I, I like uh, Mary Beth and Maria said, I, I came into the project a year ago and this is, this has been going on, you know, for some time now. So it was, it took me a time. It was a, there was a learning curve there. And, uh, and we, we came up with what we call a guia, a guide, which is what we are presenting to uh, everyone or sharing with everyone, uh, you know, that belongs to the network or to the, uh, yeah, to the network. And the guide is just a, 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 a really basic, straightforward uh, list of steps that people use to uh, generate the content and generate and share the practices and the initiatives that everyone locally, or maybe I should say hyper-locally are developing to um, have a relationship with nature or with uh, the environment. So, um, and very specifically, I think it's important to say there was a, this guide was developed originally when we worked with the um, Guadalajara team to just pilot this project. And then we were able to refine it. Yeah. And we're using that to deliver to teachers in classrooms for how to get their students to generate the content. And we are gonna show you in a little bit um, what this actually looks like, but I think it's important to, to just explain that what we're doing is almost like a train the trainer uh, program where we're teaching teachers in the sites that we're working in how to deliver this small lesson and activity with their students um, to like actually generate the and, content. And, and, you know, adding to what Mary Beth is saying, it creates a really rich cycle in which we are constantly incorporating new practices. And I think that's the part that, that, I, that we are uh, you know, it's constantly changing. It's constantly moving towards something that, uh, you know, it's adjusting constantly. It's an ongoing guide, an ongoing guide for people that are part of it. Um, so yeah, it's the uh, the feedback that we're getting. Yeah, it's the feedback that we're getting constantly for from our from our uh, partners and members and the students that are directly developing these initiatives. Um, I think it might help to just walk you through what we've done since we received the funding, which is on this, this slide. So we, we decided we wanted to take this model of how to teach teachers how to get content from their students through a lesson in their classrooms. Um, we wanted to expand that beyond Prepa Quince, the school we had worked with in Guadalajara, and try to get crowdsourced contributions to the content for the photo blog from as many sites as we could get across Latin America in a reasonable period of time so that we could start having kind of a viral effect of different youth contributing content and then following the content and then reading each other's content. So we basically took the guide that we had developed and we started introducing it to schools that we recruited in various sites across Latin America. And the way that we did that was we hosted Zoom introduction sessions with these schools located in, as you'll see in a moment, Puerto Rico, Mexico, um, Argentina, the list goes on. So we would provide an introduction session over Zoom. We would give them the guide, which would teach the teachers how to teach this lesson in their classroom. Um, and we did that in the fall of 2021, although we're still recruiting new schools. And now when we get a new school, we just do like a one-on-one -on -one session with the school as opposed to a group session. Um, and now that the teachers that we've taught that process have the guide and know how to teach their students, we're collecting content from those schools that are now contributing that and that will continue on through the spring and summer. Um, as you can imagine, COVID changes to how schools were functioning adjusted our timelines a little bit. We had some teachers in schools that were a little bit less eager to immediately implement this just because they were trying to sort out for themselves some pauses even in their own in-person school settings. In Guadalajara, for example, during Omicron, everybody went home for an extra month that nobody was anticipating. Um, notwithstanding that though, we now have various schools that are in the process of collecting content, sending us content. And again, we'll show you the content in a minute, which will really help, I think. Um, we hope that by the fall of 2022, we're going to be able to go back to these teachers and students 
that have participated in this content sourcing to say, what was this experience like for you and where would you like the content uh, and this project to go in the future so that the students and the youth can really help guide what happens to this platform next. Um, team, anything else about that timeline that I forgot or that we forgot? Mm, I'm thinking about just the uh, the just adding to to the to what you're explaining right now and the 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 the, col the collaborative nature of the of the blog and I think that's really important. It's part of the essence, I think, of the whole project. And without the uh, the uh, the participation of the students that are in the actual ground developing new new initiatives, I think uh, this wouldn't be what it is. I think that's an essential. Uh, element of, of what uh, Gente de la Tierra is. And I think it is important to note that while we have been in a push to create new content for the photo blog, that's really so that we have a big enough of a base to then engage with students to say, where should this go next? It, yes, and exactly because of that, the idea is that this continues, right? Yeah. And it's just, uh, it's, a, it's an ongoing project that obviously doesn't stop with us. So let's look at it. I think this is gonna really help in the, get, take us from the abstract to the concrete. So. We are very lucky to have had some very um, willing students and teachers that are gonna make this really what it is. So obviously this started between Madison, Wisconsin and Guadalajara, but we immediately got positive responses, not only from our immediate colleagues in Guadalajara, but from a few other schools that they're working with there. So we have the participation of a few schools in the Guadalajara area. We also had a Mexico City school that Carlos had a specific connection with that agreed to participate and came to our training. We have an ongoing relationship at, at, with some co colleagues in San Juan, Puerto Rico, where we're gonna have a school there participating. Um, we're still working on our Bogota connection, but we do have some leads there. Um, we have two schools in Quito, Ecuador um, that came from a connection with our Center for Community and Nonprofit Studies. And then we have um, a connection in Buenos Aires, Argentina from my own Lassie's experience as a master's student from 15 plus years ago um, that I was able to reinvigorate for this project at a school that I had sent my children to actually when I was there as a student. Um, and then they connected us with their colleagues in Rio. So we, this, we expect potentially for a few more schools to come in, but you can see the breadth of um, where student voices um, doing the interviews and then bringing in their community members. Um, we'll have a nice broad range of geographic locations um, that we'll be sourcing stories from. And the other thing that's really neat, which you probably all know by now, is that we can have the students submit this content in Spanish if that's the language that they're using. And Instagram will automatically translate it for the viewer in whatever language the viewer uses and vice versa. So we had questions in the beginning about how will we post this content and decide what language to use, but it just works out that the social media platforms are now situated so that whatever your reading language is, it will translate it to that language anyway. So these are some images from our very first um, experimental um, pilots with uh, the photo blog when we were pre Lassie's funding. These are individuals in Guadalajara, Wisconsin, and Puerto Rico. Um, through our existing connections and programs, we just piloted the guide and asked people to do interviews um, according to the guide to test it out. And then that gave us a really good um, base for then what we want to use um, in this newest phase where we're really going for more scale. Um, and we're going to give you a QR, QR code here, which if you have your device, everyone on, um, I'm actually going to fast forward to the, the QR code that will get you to Instagram for this. Um, let's I see. That one. one of them is for the guide and one of them is for the Instagram platform. So can, can somebody just test that QR code and let us know if that gets you to the Instagram? You can also look at the website oh, right here. This one takes to the document. It, it takes to the guide. Okay. I know we have one in here for the actual. Hmm. I thought we had one in here for the. Right there, like two more down to the left. 
Oh, well, there it is. Okay, so at the bottom of the very last slide, I. Oh, that one must still go to the guide. Okay. Um, the best thing to do at this point, if you want to follow along, is to go to this website here, which is our Center for the Community. Sure. Uh, sorry, Mary, but the second QR uh, does take you to the Instagram page. Oh, it does. Okay, so please it use does. this QR code here um, on the very last slide, and you can look at the Instagram mm -hmm. page if you're on Instagram. If you're not on Instagram, you can look at our website um, and the page that we have built to host this project. Um, our goal is going to be that all of these schools that we're working with will contribute content. If you're looking at our Instagram page right now, you can see that the last four or five posts are actually from the Mexico City School that we're working with. And they are, that's our newest content. But meanwhile, schools across those sites that we showed you should be contributing content any day. So please follow us on this site. You'll be able to see the content coming in. And meanwhile, all of the students are gonna be following this and seeing each other's posts. So, so. I, I, I just wanna add that the students have to send their post to us and Mary Beth and Carlos review it and post it. So students do not post directly onto right. the site. Right. And that's a really important distinction. Um, well, and, as, and it's a way to also just the quality and mm -hmm. protection mm -hmm. um, as we address issues of, um, of, of, you know, images. I think the other important thing to note is that the students do interviews of a community member. Mm -hmm. And part of our guide is that the students get a consent from the community member to be pictured and, and featured on our site. So we have those kinds of things included in our in our guide for the teachers. And we like to think that these things are also good steps for the students to consider in their own learning for a project like this. Um, so what happens is the teachers teach the students how to do an interview with their own devices. Um, they get a consent from a community member that they pick um, to interview. The students go do the interview, they write the transcript, they take the picture, and they send it to me and Carlos, and then we post it on our on our mm -hmm. site. And the other thing that the Lassie's fund is, funding helps us to do um, is to provide stipends to all of the schools that are participating, as well as make sure that Carlos's time, and hopefully an undergraduate student more and more, um, we're kind of working on building up that part, can provide support to the project. So, um, Resources are here. I want to make sure we have time for a good conversation about this because we really want your feedback. So um, again, you can see the posts on our website or on the Instagram page. Um, we, as we mentioned, have these plans for the future in terms of once we have this base of participants that have engaged with the project, getting the teachers and the students to advise us on where should the photo blog go from here? What kinds of ways would they like to continue to grow it or connect with other youth looking at environmental issues in their communities? Um, we certainly have a host of other locations in the world that we could expand this to through our global connections at UW-Madison and even in Wisconsin. So I think with that, we'll just kind of um, open it up a little bit to comments and questions. I, I think we're a little close to this process, so I would understand if you have a lot of questions about how this actually works. We have time for that. And we'd also love to hear from you about what recommendations or suggestions you might have for this project. So 